Alright, welcome back to XCOM 2, War of the Chosen, my name is Saiken, this is the legendary Iron Man Army of Turan, and we are going to beat the game with only two soldiers per mission. It's time for the Codex Brain Coordinates, uh, we are following the storyline progression quite a bit more, and this one here will definitely be the normal um, Codex mission, just to see what we're up against. We will fight a lot of chrysalids. We will fight a couple of psionically active uh, troops, elite priests. There is definitely going to be a gatekeeper. This is usually the mission that includes or introduces the gatekeeper for the first time. And we got um, heavy mechs as uh, well as uh, Codex. Uh, we're trying to uh, skulljack the Codex, so the uh, first appearance uh, of an avatar will happen during this mission. Um, and uh, since there are going to be chrysalids, quite a couple of them to be precise, we will probably need to go in with Roby. Roby doesn't have a partner at the moment because um, uh, Hawkbite is still on covered ops missions. Um, but uh, Roby and Renman might make up for quite a good uh, team. Um, so we had that combination uh, already a little bit earlier. But let's see how it uh, plays out. Uh, wonderfully with the um, Icarus armor and uh, the Rage suit, both of them are also equipped with their special weapons. So the special shotgun, the special katana, uh, as well as the disruptor rifle, all of those weapons uh, will certainly help. Um, yeah, and I'm expecting um, almost a flawless mission, maybe short of the chrysalids coming out of the woodworks and trying to ambush us. But other than that, we should be fine. As for the overall run, once Hogbite is done and uh, once we've finished um, finding the last chosen, we should be good to go to also uh, pay him a, a visit. Um, after careful consideration, I'm almost 100% certain that we should go with the Hogbite Roby combination, despite him being immune to melee damage, simply because uh, he will have a lot of disruptor rifle shots, and I just don't want the bleeding damage and all of the normal damage to, to bog us down. So instead, we're going to play it rather safe. And it'll be the typical team fighting against him. <clears throat> I might regret the decision afterwards if it takes too long to get him down. But uh, I figured that um, even without melee attacks, Hogbite can deal a lot of damage. He can amplify the damage. So that should be fine. And wow, look at that. Um, the game really has given us a nice little advantage here. So we're starting with four instead of two operatives. That is beautiful. Uh, first and foremost, we stole a stun lancer. That's the best we can ask for. Um, maybe short of a shield bearer, but there was no shield bearer in this mission. And we got uh, Juan Vasquez, uh, one of the resistance operatives. Perfect. I would say we're Moving to designated position. going to advance slowly but surely. Stun Lancer. Juan can move over here. And Roby kind of takes the back. So I'm expecting a couple of chrysalids and once they are spotted out then they will be a problem. So one buried uh, in here, one buried in here, okay, one buried in here, pretty close to the river.
told you it's going to be chrysalid madness. So that's six chrysalids overall. Closest one, I think, has buried himself over here. So we gotta be careful. Head to that location. Specifically, since the chrysalids, as soon as we are in range, uh, will unburrow and start attacking us. We, I unfortunately don't have the scouting protocol. That would have been the hard counter for them. Alternatively, if we would have more um, equipment that we could bring with us, um, scanning, um, scanning equipment would work just as well. We don't have um, either of that because we need a blue screen rounds and we needed uh, the med kits plus the school jack, so that already took all of our equipment slots. But there is a second technique uh, to deal with the chrysalis, which is basically just waiting for them to take a move. As long as they are not spotted out, they will eventually start moving. It's not the nicest way of uh, playing through it, because it is less adventurous. But nevertheless, it is uh, helpful. So we know that there's one buried in here, right? One pretty much buried up here at the end of it. Another one buried up here. So these are the three that we already know about. In terms of hit points... If we move up here, I think we would already trigger the chrysalid. This here should be out of range. Okay. I'm on the move. Yeah, and one way of dealing with them as well is uh, you can always start with an Overwatch trap and just have one of your operatives basically scout them out. Since we have enough, uh, that would even work out. So kind of having that overwatch trap and basically waiting for the chrysalid to sprint in and take a couple of overwatch shots, that definitely would work. Also make no mistake, uh, just because we're concealed, that doesn't mean anything for the chrysalid. It effectively just ignores it. So let's try the Overwatch trap thing. Overwatch. Which is everyone goes out to Overwatch, and this here should trigger the Chrysalid. Surprisingly enough, doesn't do uh, the job. <clears throat> I figured we would be close enough to, to actually trigger it. Uh, there's another pack. Yeah, let's. I don't know if this here would trigger him. Let's just use the spots where we have a high confidence that it is not triggered, which means we're just reorganizing and reshuffling our team a bit. Again, this here is meant to make sure that we're not triggering anything. Good. Now we can overwatch. Just overwatch, overwatch, overwatch. And take this position here, which might trigger. It doesn't. This here is a lucky circumstance for us.
With them coming a bit closer, we can get into more aggressive positions. And if they actually run into us, we could um, ambush them quite easily. Very nice. Commander, that codex provides the ideal opportunity. Okay, so the codex aren't spotted out yet. And unless we're moving, they should be out of line of sight, which is really positive. Um, I think this here almost asks for a shred storm cannon, so we could start this off. Uh, the mech will um, stay where it is, the other two will take half cover. And we can relatively easily kill all three of them. So yeah, let's start with it. Who wants some? They've got opposition. Fortunately, we also removed our own cover completely. Let's put an aid protocol onto uh, Renan just to make sure that he has threat assessment, but also uh, a little bit of cover. Taking a, uh, taking out the mech first. It's an easy kill. Let's take out the trooper second yet another easy kill and he will most likely do mind control and that's pretty much it mind control and or stasis oh no he instead decides to buff up the chrysalid that has uh, burrowed himself down there. And we just triggered the next pack. Right, interesting. Let's see if we can flank everyone. Time to use the Icarus suit, which this year would be a nice little position. Oh, lovely. Did we just trigger another pack? <laughs> of course. Of course. Okay. I would say we are starting with reducing just the number of enemies. <clears throat> 
So we do have untouchable. Let's uh, think this uh, think this through actually. So we do have untouchable. We could kill one more. But that wouldn't give us um, another action because uh, we don't have death from above. We could even kill the Archon here. I'm pretty certain. Eh, maybe not. Rapid Fire almost could kill him. Capacitator Discharge. We only hit one. Okay. Um, we certainly can move over here with uh, Run Gun. Just take him down. We do not want to trigger the Chrysalid. Which means if we are, I mean, we could, if we were to stun lance him, that'll be at best 10 points of damage. It's not, it's enough to kill him, but it's not enough to reset him really. This here would hit. But it uh, wouldn't immediately kill, um, and instead another Codex would spawn, uh, spawn. So I'm not sure if that's the best idea. This here looks like a very solid play. Yeah, great shot, unfortunately not the one I was looking for. I mean, there is a chance for a crit, but still, even with a crit, he wouldn't kill him. Just too little damage. Where could, where could uh, the Codex spawn? He could spawn anywhere here, back here. It's pretty much out of line of sight, as long as he would be in line of sight for... Um, for uh, Roby, that would be fine because he could just clean up the codex. But it isn't as simple. So instead, we're moving over here. Again, not triggering anything. And hopefully, this here hits. Nice little solid hit. I like, I almost like that idea with, uh, with the rapid stri rage strike. There's a high chance that he is going to die. Um, melee attacks usually uh, have a higher chance to kill, um, uh, even if he has sustenance available. So that could be a thing. The other option, yeah, he can't fully move up, so may as well give it a try. The downside is this is going to trigger the chrysalid, which means the chrysalid is going to move um, onto us. And he does not have untouchable unless this guy dies. Uh, sustenance will not trigger untouchable. So that's a bit of an issue, but it's a risk I'm willing to take. All right, disoriented. Okay, we haven't even triggered. That's not bad either.
we need to save one of uh, the codex for the skull jack. Um, how much damage would a melee attack do? That's an, almost an instant kill. Almost. You know what? Let's try this. Okay, never mind. We're playing it safe, which in this case would be Let's hit this codex. Kill it for sure. And let's run and gun. Get up here and kill the Archon. Still aiming for this flaw uh, for the flawless mission. Let's see if we can get him down. Come on, we need a crit. All right, baby, that's what I'm talking about. Good job. Implaceable. He's most likely going to uh, do a psionic bomb somewhere and teleport, so Implaceable really doesn't help us a lot. I think we're f positioned fine. Uh, placing ourselves next to him wouldn't really make a difference because teleport doesn't trigger um, Blade Storm. There's the psionic bomb. There's the untouchable. Take a fire over here. All right. So, this here is a 100% chance, perfect, so we're reloading, uh, killing this guy, we got death from above, uh, which we will need, and I don't know if the Skulljack and Reaper actually work together, but we're going to find out, because we're going to Skulljack. And if, if that works together with Reaper, we would have just killed it. We do not have um, immunity against all of his mind effects because uh, we couldn't bring a mind shield with us. The guy, uh, the avatar, is back here. Keep in mind, it can teleport. So I'm still thinking how we would uh, do that in the best way. Possibly 
Scouting it out helps. So let's use the implaceable. Actually move over. Hello there. It directly runs into a blade storm, which we couldn't have asked for more, to be honest. Now it teleports itself into a position where Roby can actually hit it and kill it. Wow. That was the most stupid avatar I've seen in a while. Roby will take damage from the psionic bomb. Uh, it is what it is. At this point, I felt killing the avatar. And taking 5 damage in return is worth it all. Untouchable even protects against that. Cool. <laughs> okay, well. I guess that was a little bit anticlimactic. So let's count real quick. So we we have killed a group of two codices, group of two codices plus one Archon, that's five. Killed a bunch of <coughs> patrols over here, that's eight. We were looking at, I think, 13. So I think we're pretty well situated. Okay, let us put everyone into again um, an Overwatch trap and the Elite Lancer will trigger I said the Elite Lancer will trigger the Chrysalid It might be since the Elite Lancer is not officially an XCOM agent that it doesn't trigger. So let's try the same with Renman here. This here looks a little bit odd to be honest. I've never seen a bored chrysalid not coming out. We know it's there, so... Order's confirmed. Move it out. Overwatch. 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 And... Can we trigger it now? Finally! Okay, so that's one chrysalid down, five more to go. Like I said, we had uh, killed eight, so we're looking at five more chrysalids, and then this uh, thing here should be okay. pretty straightforward, almost over. Well, maybe.
Maybe I was wrong. Okay, let's see. Moving over here. I'm trusting you here. Into a flanking position. And although it's a long shot, we might be able to get it. That's the opposite of getting it. Probably one of the worst outcomes that we could have asked for. The only reason why I'm not charging in is I don't want to trigger more chrysalids. Unfortunately for us, yeah, we can't really reach him. Yeah. All right, it'll be a psionic bomb anyways, so might as well wait for it to happen. Reload and take a shot. Well, let's move out. So far, the mission is pretty much by the book. Taking a nice little round to recover here. We are now up to 11 kills, and we know of five more chrysalids that are somewhere out there. Moving on target location. Come on it. Overwatch, Overwatch, and Overwatch. And we're going to scout for more chrysalids. Let's see. We knew that uh, someone was uh, one chrysalid was up here and one chrysalid was up here, so might as well continue engaging into this direction. So that's one and two and three. By at that point, I think we have no more real uh, patrols, so we can stand in the open. It's only chrysalids uh, for now. Overwatch, Overwatch, and Overwatch plus. Renman is making a move. Should have probably brought scan uh, bought scanning protocol. This here is very cumbersome, but it shows you how you can do it if you are not having scanning protocol. So 
for educational purposes it might be the right thing. Okay, let's continue moving over here. I'm making sure that wherever I place uh, Roby, there is plenty of space for him to be engaged up, uh, upon. Best overwatch shots, but thanks to the katana and the fact that it can't miss, chrysalids um, are always taking a severe beating. It's not a one shot uh, though, so don't uh, think that you are fully safe with the katana. Minimum damage can still occur. Again, Overwatch, Overwatch, Overwatch. Renan is moving in deeper in the hopes of triggering yet another chrysalid. Well, I would say that has worked like a charm. So we know there's one up here, and there's one over here. We also know there's probably one more over here. Overwatch, Overwatch, and Overwatch, plus Renan is moving in. I'm trusting you here. Ah, that's bad news. Yeah, so much for the perfect mission. Alright, Reaper time. Still, unfortunately, Gatekeeper here, which I don't want to immediately trigger. This here is a one shot kill. Which means we just need to injure him. And we can still stay where we are. Both of them will. Approach Renman. Okay, injured enough. Good to go. We have Untouchable. And luckily, we do have Blade Master, which will kill both of them. Yeah, very unfortunate that we triggered an entire new pack.
All right, time for a heal. Reload Overwatch, reload Overwatch, reload Overwatch, and just Overwatch. Alright, if I'm not misinformed, that should have been the last one. I was misinformed. Back online. Okay. I like the whole Chrysalid encounter maps. Uh, my absolute favorite map in XCOM 1 was always Newfoundland with the Chrysalid invasion. And I was pretty sad that when they uh, revamped it, um, the whole XCOM 1 maps uh, within XCOM 2, that so. there was a little bit of a Chrysalid vibe, but definitely not to the same extent as Newfoundland. Alright, Overwatch oh, yeah. trap. Let's continue with one more round of Overwatch. Okay. This here should trigger the Gatekeeper, but also probably the um, chrysalid. It's fine, we've already been injured, so it doesn't matter if we're going to be injured one more time. There's the gatekeeper. That's not the same rift the Codex used when it appeared. This thing could lead anywhere. It may not even be pointing at Earth. As with most things, we'll likely need to bring it back to the ship for further examination. We're giving ourselves an aid protocol for threat assessment, and since we're at the end of the mission, might as well take the high ground over here. And go for rapid fire. This here should be the kill. Moving back and putting ourselves into a hunker down mode. really didn't matter that we were in range for the explosion. I could have moved out of range to play it a little bit cleaner, uh, but since uh, Renman has already been injured, it, like I said, at this point, there is no difference. He will have a couple of days recovery ahead of him. This here triggers the last chrysalid. Or not. Okay. Position confirmed. I'm on it. I'm on it. Ok, 
okay. Never seen a chrysalid actually running away from a potential target. Good. And that is it, gentlemen. Excellent, but not flawless. Let's see how many days of <coughs> sick bay we're going to have for Renman. Okay, good, let's take a look. Good news, we succeeded fully and also got a Codex Brain, an intact one. Bad news, Renman is out for seven more days, but that's okay. By the way, I think Roby dealt a lot of damage this mission, which is pretty good, I liked it. Avatar Corpse, Supplies, Reduction of Avatar Progress, yeah. Upgrading it uh, for Psionic Gate, and here we go. Perfect, so storyline is progressing as expected. Avatar progress is now at zero. It was at zero beforehand. And I think we also killed all of the um, facilities short of this one, which is fine. So, where's the UFO? No, no, why did I click? No, there's a UFO and I was like, luckily we're not down there. How about we're at the exact opposite side of the globe? I don't want to be scouted out by a UFO and have to defend the Avenger for the eighth time in a row. Let's gain some intel for sector 13, South Africa. and keep a low profile. I really don't want to be seen. Got another Wrath suit. That's good. And we got another supply drop. For you, Hatching it through to your quarters now. Yeah, look at that. I mean, this was an extremely successful month. It's month uh, 12, 18 by now. Two of the chosen ones are defeated, and we're going to get the hunter soon. That is okay. Aliens uh, create another facility is okay as well. So the hidden events don't seem to be too bad as well. The retaliation stri stri um, strike will happen in the next week. Let's keep that in mind. So that's probably going to be our next mission in 10 weeks until a new facility construction. Uh, 
Um, we got instant completion of heavy grenades and heavy weapons. I like that one. Black market cost reduction by 33% is probably even better because we uh, are short on intel. We don't need that many. Or we don't have a problem uh, with timing on creation of heavy weapons. But we could um, reduce the intel cost quite a bit. The rest is okay. I think nothing new. And look at that. We immediately got a nice new guerrilla operations mission. Neutralize the field commander. Very difficult. Um, we got another engineer. Yeah, we're not going to protect the device. I don't feel like that. This here seems to be easy. Only advent leadership. Yeah, I think we're going to go for, for this mission. And there's a lot of supplies ahead as well. Oh, by the way, wait a second. Ah, we're still doing the covered ops mission. I was about to ask, what, what happened with the covered ops? Yeah, we're infiltrating his stronghold. Good, in which case, we already know that it's going to be the neutralization of the field commander. Setting course for sector 12. I would like to go in with Dragonover and Edgar Alien Poe. The question is, are they even ready? Or do we need to take someone else? Dragonova would be ready. Edgar Alien Poe, however, would be wounded. We got another sharpshooter. Unfortunately, they don't have a bond. So this year could be a thing. Top shelf. And Dragonova. Or... We're maybe going in with two completely new characters. Anyways, we're going to see about that in the next mission. I'll prepare all of that. Thank you for watching. It was a pleasure as always. And uh, see you in the next mission. Goodbye.